Hello everyone and welcome to a new PS3 video and today we'll be upgrading our storage on our PS3 Slim and I'm going to be upgrading from a 120 gigabyte hard drive to a 1 terabyte hard drive and I know I'm going to get a lot of questions saying hey why didn't you go with an SSD and the reason being is because I upgraded my laptop from a 1 terabyte to a 2 terabyte not knowing I had the one terabyte sitting in the laptop because I didn't uh, allocate that space on my laptop yet so it's yet to be used and not knowing that I had that one terabyte hard drive I said to myself might as well throw it into the PS3 and start using it so in the future I will upgrade to an SSD when the funds are available and that's one of the reasons why I didn't get one is because uh, they're quite expensive right now. They're going for like $80 to $100 for a 1 terabyte SSD. And knowing myself, I won't go cheap on something like this because you never want to go cheap on hardware like this, like M.2 SSD. You always want to get a good name brand like SanDisk, or Samsung, uh, Western Digital because over time with these cheaper Chinese uh, hard drives or SSDs, they will fail and corrupt your files so that's the last thing you need when it comes to you know installing this kind of storage and getting all these games installed in your in your saved data and things like that so you always want to get a name brand and I highly recommend everyone uh, to do that when it comes to micro SDs uh, SD cards or anything that involves the storage always go with a name brand for the installation of the new one terabyte i'm going to be using a seagate barracuda and it has a 7200 rpms which is pretty nice this one goes for about 40 to 50 dollars and if you're interested in getting this specific hard drive i'll have links also in the description under links if you do decide to purchase a hard drive locally let's say through a computer store or micro center or through the facebook marketplace just make sure that it's a 2.5 inch drive along with 7200 RPMs. Uh, don't go with the 5400 RPM because you will lose a little bit of speed. And we're looking at a 30% difference. So always go for a 7200 RPM drive. And that's 2.5 inches. So basically the size of like a laptop drive. And you should be good to go. Now moving on to one of the most important parts of this entire process and that is backing up your current files. Now if you're not worried about your current files, you really don't care about your saved data or the games that you already have downloaded from the PSN store, then you don't have to really worry about this. But for those of you who have games, like for me personally I had uh, like 3 PS1 games a couple of PS2 games and a bunch of saved data from like Call of Duty Black Ops 1 and 2. I had like all the maps uh, for zombies and then I had a bunch of awesome songs for Rock Band that I wanted to save. And I went through all of my files, I deleted a bunch of stuff and even then I had to wait three hours to back those files up into my USB stick. So. Uh, this process can be very tedious and it can take a long time if you're going to be backing up a lot of stuff. So uh, I recommend getting a large USB uh, storage device if you are going to be backing up most of your files and I'll have links in the description on various different sizes that you can use and you will need a USB storage device in order for you to install the firmware on your new hard drive so we will need a storage device in order for us to do that communication between the hard drive the ps3 and the usb stick for our firmware before you get started on the backup i highly recommend going through all of your files and deleting stuff that you don't want this is going to save you a lot of time don't save stuff that you're not going to use don't save any game files that you're never going to play again so just go through all that delete stuff you don't want and you'll save a bunch of time all right so moving on to uninstalling our current storage device from our ps3 so make sure you power down your ps3 disconnect all cables and it's going to be fairly easy on the slim model and there's going to be this little door at the bottom of your PS3 and you just have to lift up under the little notch there and it will reveal a screw. 
So all you have to do is just get a normal screwdriver and unscrew that. Once you remove the screw, you can release the cover off the front. Use the latch on the hard drive caddy to pull the entire storage device out. And on the back of the caddy, you will find four screws. Go ahead and unscrew those and you'll be able to remove the hard drive from the caddy. Now that you have your hard drive, we will have to connect it to our PC in order for us to correctly format it to FAT32. And we will have to open up our disk management to allocate that space in order for the PC to actually read it and to format it through the FAT32 process. And it's pretty simple and easy to connect the hard drive to your PC and you have to connect it through the power obviously and through the SATA cable so if you don't have any of this there is this really cool cable that I found on Amazon which is a USB uh, connection and you can connect that hard drive to your PC via USB cable and you can go through the process that way I did it kind of old school here uh, I just went on the back of my PC connected the SATA cable with the power and I just let it hang there and it worked like a charm so no big deal once you have your hard drive fully connected to your PC you want to open up the disk management under settings and from there you want to find the unallocated device that's been connected and it's usually gonna be highlighted in black and it's gonna say unallocated so what you want to do is right click and you want to start a new simple volume Go through the process of setting that partition up and then from there we're going to be getting it ready to format it to FAT32. When it comes to the file system you can either choose NTFS or EXFAT. I went ahead and chose EXFAT. There's really not much of a difference because we're still going to format this to FAT32 so either option works. In the description you'll find a link to Ridge Crop Consultants and you want to click on the image so you can download the FAT32 format program and this is by far the best program to format any type of storage device that you have connected to FAT32. Run the program and make sure that you select the drive that's the one terabyte hard drive or SSD that you're trying to install on your PS3. As far as the allocation unit size goes, you can just leave it at default and make sure quick format is checked off. Start the process and you should be good to go. You can now see your new hard drive formatted to FAT32 and we are ready to connect it to our PS3. Next, we want to format our USB drive to FAT32 just to make sure that it reads through the PS3 properly. After you format your USB to FAT32, it's now time to download an official firmware. And for this demonstration, I went ahead and used 4.88, but you can use 4.89 now that the jailbreak is available for that firmware, so that wouldn't be a problem. I'll have links for 4.88 and 4.89 in the description down below. And once those firmwares are fully downloaded, what you want to do is open up your USB drive and you want to create a new folder in all caps called PS3. Then within that folder, we're going to create another folder, the subfolder of that PS3 folder. And we're going to name that one in all caps as well, update, U-P-D-A-T-E. Open up that new created update folder and copy over your official firmware 
into that folder. Make sure it's called ps3updat.pup. Once it's fully copied over, we are good to go. We have our hard drive fully formatted, our USB drive with the official firmware, and it's now time to head onto our PS3 and install that firmware onto our newly formatted hard drive. Insert your new hard drive into the caddy correctly and screw on those four screws on the back of the caddy and reinsert it into your PS3. Once you have your hard drive fully installed on your PS3, go ahead and connect your USB device along with your power cable and any other cables you'll need obviously to get your system up and running and turn on your PS3 and you will see a new message saying the system software cannot be run correctly. So we have to press the PS button to try to restart the system, but we don't want to do that. What we want to do is press and hold the start and select buttons at the same time and from there the system is going to be checking for any storage devices with any type of uh, official firmware so it's going to be going through the entire check and it will discover your usb drive and if you did everything correctly format your hard drive you installed the uh, official firmware correctly on your usb drive then your system will prepare to update the hard drive and get it ready to install and get it all configured for your ps3 once you see that new window that says preparing to update you should be fine and just leave your ps3 alone don't touch it don't even look at it just let it do its thing it's going to take some time it's probably going to take like maybe 10 to 15 20 minutes most for it to fully configure reinstall the official firmware and it should be all done Once your PS3 starts for the very first time, you can go under settings and through system information, you can view your storage capacity. Congratulations on your new storage upgrade on your PS3. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope it was somewhat of help for you to get that new storage upgraded on your PS3. And I do cover a bunch of different homebrew on this channel and I just started on the PS3 and I do have a new playlist in the description down below so you can go ahead and get started on installing a bunch of cool stuff on your ps3 and i will continue to bring new content here on the channel that involves the ps3 so make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any videos in the future i really do appreciate it and if you enjoyed it make sure to give it a thumbs up it really helps out the whole algorithm here on youtube and if you have any questions whatsoever, please comment down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, everyone. And I'll see you on the next one.